We invite you to our services at 12 noon or live at 1205 at slugaroo.com. We also have Breaking Bread Bible Study every other Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. He's about to turn some things around in your life. I decree and I declare that things are going to turn around in your life. Not just because, but because God loves you so much. My God, God loves you so much. He don't want you to be stuck. What he's trying to unpluck you from. <laughs> Did you catch it? He don't want you to be stuck in what he's about to unpluck you from. He's about to turn it around. What do you mean, Pastor? Give you a testimony real quick. There was some debts that I was going to have to pay, right? And uh, debt collectors, they called my phone. Amen. They sent me letters. But you know the word. I'm a man of, of finances and king of stewardship. I want to pay my debts. So I'm ready to pay my debts. Glory to God. I'm going to give you a, a lesson real quick. What I've learned of your flesh and your spirit, right? My flesh wanted to pay the debts. But my spirit began to pray. My flesh wanted to pay the debts, but my spirit began to pay, I mean to pray about what I should pay, right? So I'm ready. My spirit is like pray and, and, and do godly things. My flesh is like just pay the bill. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to pay the bill. I want to be a good man of, of integrity. I want to pay this stuff. Glory to God. And there wasn't no chump change. So a, a person in their flesh would say, hang up the phone. Listen, but the spirit said, hold on. <laughs> Listen, the spirit said, hold on. So that's 10 minutes. That's 15 minutes. That's 30 minutes. It's an hour now. And I'm still on hold. But my flesh is saying, pay the bill. Listen, my flesh is saying, pay the bill. My spirit is saying, hold on. Listen, listen. So as I'm waiting, the lady said, hello. I'm saying, hey, how you doing? She said, well, you know what? Our system always sends out these things because that's what the computer does. But because you held on so long, God turned it around. So now I didn't have to pay what my flesh said pay, but the spirit said wait. Can we be so in tune with God, even though our flesh is sick of people? And oh, listen to this, even though our flesh is sick of bills, but the spirit says wait. Those that wait upon the Lord. My God, so I waited and he turned that thing around. Even though the weapon was formed, God turned it around. God turned it. So I just want to encourage you guys. If you believe in God to turn some things around in your life, just wait on it. My God, just tap your neighbor and say, just wait on it. 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 He's going to work it out for your good because this is your season. This is your season, my God. This is your season. This is my season. This is everybody's season, right? And be happy for others when they season comes. When everybody else's season comes, rejoice. When somebody else going through something, rejoice when they come out of something, my God. Because it could be you next, my God. It could be your son. It could be your daughter. It could be that breakthrough you waiting for. It could be that turnaround that you expecting. Glory to God. Just wait on it. I be even giving my wife some encouragement, baby, just wait on it. My God, if it's for you, it's for you. My God, my, my wife loves some decor. She loves, um, um, what is it, picnic tables and couches and little sofas and all of that. And I be like, baby, it's all good. What's for you is for you. All you got to do is wait on it. I said, baby, just wait on it. You're going to get it. Amen. Just wait on it, my God. So what I want to encourage y'all with that brief little testimony, the Lord is about to turn some things around for you today. Amen. I prophesy whatever happened to me this week that gave me some more joy. Oh my God, I'm flowing already. Listen, stop trying to get your mind so boggled down with your present circumstances. You don't see the future joy that's around the corner. But God comes to turn that thing around. Glory to God, you may not have no problem with finances. You may be balling out of control, but we're taking up donations right now. Amen. You may be filled with joy, but we're taking up some donations of joy right now. Glory to God, you may have fullness and happiness. Share some of that with somebody else who's going through some things. I've learned as you, you give to others, others' lives can change. And it can be a turnaround. Everybody say turnaround. 
it can be a turnaround. Amen. We're going to conclude our Soul Train mini-series of the series of transportation. And in the sermon uh, series flyer, it says, what will take you to your next destination? What will take you to your next destination? We have a, a, a little locomotive or a train that's on that flyer. And that spoke to me. My God, we want to be speedy. Amen. We want to be flowing. My God, we want to go where God has destined us to go. Glory to God. I said we're not going to talk about no buses. We're not going to talk about no bikes. We're going to talk about a train because we are destined to go somewhere. So we said, get up on this train. I'm the conductor. All aboard. Money train. My God, yeah, money train's coming soon, Ray. Money train coming soon. But before I talk about money, I want to get your soul right. Before we talk about the blessings of the Lord, I want to get your soul right, my God. Because if not, you could be right there waiting for your next destination. Got a pocket full of money, but your soul is bad, my God. You can have everything you need, but your mind is messed up. So today we're going to talk about a soul train and the soul ties that try to keep you tied up. Soul train and the soul ties to try to keep you tied up. Glory to God. And I come with my spiritual scissors today. And I come with the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit today, to cut you loose of what you tied up in. Some of us feel comfortable being tied up in something because we ain't been held before. Ooh, we. That's powerful. Some of us are comfortable with being tied up because we've never been held before. Don't take being held captive as love. That's powerful. Don't be felt, hey, don't be felt of feeling like you're captive in love and captive in that place because you want something to, to feel like you're being loved, right? So we talk about soul ties and what soul ties is is when you're going in your relationships and then you have in the course that you be with that person. Now you take on those characteristics of that person. You were sweet before, but now you got with that joke and now you're me. <laughs> That's a soul tie, my God. You was really nice before, but now you got a little attitude about yourself. You got a little swag about yourself. Something starts to change in you because now you become one. That's why churches and pastors say, wait until marriage, because we don't want you screwed up. Right. And then we don't want you to be going crazy. Yeah. Amen. But we got to let you keep going crazy, because then we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> Amen. That's what another pastor said. I said, I'm going to use that too. Amen. Amen. He wants you to go crazy so they can have a job. Amen. As a pastor, glory to God, our job is to lead you through this thing that we call life. Yeah. Amen. Even though we're all going through the same lifestyles and the life changes and those turnarounds, we need to know who's turning it around. Oh my God. It wasn't me. It wasn't my intellect. It wasn't the things that I put on paper. It was God. Listen to this. It was God who brought you from where you were. It was God to bring you where you at. And I told you on my Instagram before I started, glory to God, you've been too far to stay where you are. You've been too far. Listen, if you already where you at right now, don't turn back now. Oh my God. You're too far to stay where you are. God is trying to get you to your destination. But what is going to take you there? What is going to take you there? My God. God is going to take you where you need to be because of that soul train. So how do I get on that train, Pastor? Uh, if you're not saved, you can repent, my God, and believe that God died, he rose, and all of that. You know how we do those formalities, but now we on the train, now what? Listen to this. Now get in good. Now get in motion. Now get ready to see what God has for your life. I didn't know when I got on this train I would be doing this right here. I just wanted my soul saved. So that was the thing first. I wanted to get my soul right, being in the streets, gang banging and drug dealing. If I get killed, I want to go to heaven. That was my mentality. All I wanted to do was be saved. All I wanted to do was be saved even though I was living any type of way. So I was going on a destination, but I didn't know how I was going to get there. Destination. So what we're going to talk about today is part two of Soul Train, which is Soul Ties. Breaking free from soul ties and, uh, that tries to keep you bound. Have you been in the seasons where you feel like you can't get no higher? You can raise your hand if you like. You may be in that season right now. 
You may be in that season right now. Glory to God. When I come to bust that bubble right now, listen, you're going to come out of that buzz, bubble so you can bubble. And when pastor say bubble, he talking about blow it up. Amen. When pastor talking about bubble, he talking about overflow. When pastor talking about bubble, he talking about more than enough. What time? What? My God. Listen, so God wants you to go to where he has destined you to go. No matter how much I want to take you somewhere, if God didn't destine you to get off where I get off, you're going to get off where he tell you to. Yeah. Oftentimes, we want to hop off before God says the next step is your place to getting off, right? Like when I could have just paid that bill and been out of all my increase, God said, wait. So now my little bill went from $75 to 80 My God, listen. God won't put too much on you than you can pass. Well, here's a nugget. If you got stuff that's up to here, maybe that was you and not God. Think about that. He says, I will not put no more on you than you can bear. So when your burdens get so heavy, did God give you that? We want to break soul ties today, amen? We want to break soul ties. So I was telling Lady Ruth, we're going to do a little uh, reflection here in a couple weeks, glory to God, and we're going to talk about stewardship. You know I love stewardship, but stewardship can even be relationships. Stewardship can even be the ones around you, my God. If they're weighing you down or when you get around them, you feel like you got a headache. <laughs> you got a stomach ache. <laughs> you know, you not even need to think something's going on, right? Figure out what's going on. Hey, every time I get around that person, I get broke. <laughs> every time I get around that person, I'm spending money that I know I didn't have in the first place. Amen. Every time I get around this person, we got to run for our life. Listen to this. You got to make sure who you around, probably God, can take you to where you're going. My God, if not, you better get off that train and hop on the soul train. Because uh, sometimes, ooh, we, hallelujah, I see you. Sometimes the tracks that you own are bound for destruction. Oh, you got to jump the tracks. If you know back in the day, they had to do everything manually. They see the train coming this way, and they see another train this way. They got to pull the train so the track can go on the other side. Listen, I don't come to just stare you, but I come to encourage you. Maybe it's time to pull that lever to switch tracks. My God, you know how sometimes you go down those streets and it says street, not through? We're going to get off of those routes as well. Glory to God. We want to go to our destination. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm encouraging you, glory to God. Maybe your life is going so crazy right now because you're adding what God didn't add to you. If God didn't give it to you, don't put it on your plate. Listen to this. God, when he gives you something, my God, it's not going to be no worry. It's not going to be no pain. Man, you're going to manage it. You're praying for increase. You ain't got it yet. Maybe it's not time yet. You're praying for increase. Then you get it. Now it's your time. But others going to say, you ain't ready for that. Who am I talking to? You've been praying for increase. Now you got it. Now watch your circle of influence. When the Lord gives you what you've been praying for. I got a reflection. You laughed at my struggle, but frowned at my bubble. <laughs> Listen. People want you to be struggling so they can up one on you and look down on you. Yeah, I'm talking all over the place tonight because y'all pulling on me. Some of us want to go to the next level, but the one you're on the tracks with wants you to stay in the back of the caboose. The devil is a lie. We're breaking free from that. We're breaking free from those soul ties and those things that tries to keep us bound. Glory to God. And if it's spiritual, it must be broken in the spirit. Listen, if it's spiritual, it must be broken in the spirit. Glory to God. When we become one flesh with our counterparts, my God, we want, we got to break it in the spirit. Listen, some uh, things that's going on in relationships, since I'm talking about relationships now with that, some things go on is because, glory to God, you came together as one. You can't talk out a God thing without putting God in it. Talk out of God thing without putting God in it. God, He put this out here so we can replenish the earth and multiply and be a man and woman, husband and wife. But the thing is, is we was born 
into a fallen world so the fallen world became this and we became that we was born in the sin shaped in iniquity and he's trying to get us back to our authority but if we don't hear the word of God we won't know and then we're just going to be going blind and now I had about 20 different relationships and I'm mixed up soul ties we want to break those things my God but you got to want it amen you're not going to the surgery, glory to God, to get surgery done if you don't want it. Amen. Because because something is going on, you need something fixed. You need something fixed. You need something healed. Amen. Let's roll with it. So it's a spiritual thing and it must be broken. Glory to God. It says this in uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. It says, for, what, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It says, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I know that was a lot, but what I'm saying is you're not fighting people. You're not fighting people. It's spiritual things that try to go higher than God. Them things that say in imaginations, you don't need to go to church today. <laughs> Listen, you need to stay right at home and watch from live. That's a spirit that's going high above God. You got to cast that imagination down. Get up out of my mind. Let me go into the house of God so I can hear the word of God so I can watch my mind. You got to cast down those imaginations. Anything that's trying to... Woo, Keep you from God is not God. Amen. Because God wants to get you to where you need to be on the soul train. So if something is telling you don't get on that train, you know that's not God. God want to add to you. He don't want to take nothing from you, right? So it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you're saying, I'm going to be obedient to assemble together to get what I need corporately as well as individually because I'm ready to bubble up. Amen. I'm ready to bubble up. My spirit needs to bubble up. It says, stir up the gift. Some of our gifts are laying dormant because we're stuck. Some of our gifts are laying dormant because we got soul ties and it's keeping us tied up. And your spirit is saying, let me out. So I can do the work of God. Amen. So I can do the work where God has called me to be. My God, because I have some things that's inside of me that need to be broke free from the spirit. Because they came in like spirits. You know how they say, you act just like your daddy. You look just like your daddy. You get it from your mom. <laughs> Naturally and spiritually. <laughs> Glory to God. So we got to know what's going on in our life. Amen. So that should encourage us to cast down imaginations. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And then I already put this down. I laid it root spoke on it. I almost jumped through the wall. Glory to God. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Now this is where you get excited. My God. Because now you know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So somebody may hate on you, but that's not natural, it's spiritual. It's not the person, it's the spirit. As I was doing my study, I was even thinking about the lady with the spirit of infirmity. My God, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of envy, glory to God. Just like the fruit of the spirit, there's a lot of spirits that's out there that try to, glory to God, cloud your vision of what God is doing around you, right? So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No, my God. So that lets us know there is a constant war against you in your everyday life. So you trying to figure out, man, why they trip with me on my job every time? It's just that one person. No, that's a spirit behind that person. Why is they always trying to deny me from some things? Maybe it might be the spirit that's going on because listen. Everybody don't want you blessed, but the devil don't want you blessed. So there's things that he sends your way, even, ooh, we thank you, Lord. It's even seasons that go on in your life that comes the same time every year. Every year. My God, every year you're going through the same thing because the devil know, I'm going to get them, listen, off track. I'm going to get them off track. I'm, I'm going to be here waiting on them because I know they like this such and such. Listen, have you ever been around somebody you got a soul tie with? When you see them, you jiggle. 
You see them, you get the butterflies. That's an indication of a soul tie. Can I be real? And you know when that soul tie is broken, when you don't feel the same way, when you see them. Because your spirit is in a twine. That's why people say, I love you during intercourse. You really don't love them. You just got a connection with them. My God. Oh my God. So what is going on is, glory to God, you in love with the emotion of loving them. Because you've been tired of so many times by all your other relationships, you just want to be held. Yeah, yeah. Woo! My God, my God, that's why it's so easy for me to be free. Because I'm married and we consummated that thing. So listen, as we made that thing holy, everything else fell off. Soul ties fell off, my God, because we put that thing holy before the Lord and we put it as an offering. Like, Lord God, this is my wife. Lord God, this is my husband. This is a vow that I make. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So we must know that we are in constant war every day. And some are subtle attacks and some are more direct. Some are subtle attacks, just little, little attacks, you know what I mean? It's those little attacks that try to get under your skin. It's those little attacks that try to make you feel like you're uh, less than when you're more than. Amen? The word says you're more than a conqueror. You're not less than. Don't let nobody put you down. Or don't let nobody put your church down. Amen? Don't let nobody put your pastor down. He, he's more than. My God. She's more than. My God. I'm more than. My God. The Lord said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now you're using your weapon, which is the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, and we should learn these things so we can be victorious in our life, but if we don't know these things, let's go hear a word. How can I come out of what I'm in, pastor, and nobody knows what I've been going through? Hallelujah, hallelujah. But it says this, we have power through Jesus Christ. Amen, a soul train. In Isaiah 54 and 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. In every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So what that is saying to you today, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Because you're servants of the Lord. Amen. So once you become a servant of the Lord, you get benefits. Yeah. Once you become a servant of the Lord, you get benefits. Amen. It's a lot of stuff that we go through in our life that we didn't have to really uh, succumb to those calamities because we serve God. Amen. Sometimes you be like, man, how did y'all make it out of this? And we tell them God did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, what happened? God did it. My God. It wasn't me. It was God did it. Amen. You know Shaggy's song. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> God did it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, God did it, my God And when that becomes your testimony You don't have to worry about nothing You just give it all to God <laughs> it, Like you know, pastor say This is a bill, this is God's My God, ooh, do you know God Will redeem what you messed up? God will redeem what you messed up He will redeem it You know why? Because he's a good God Lord, I messed up. I know you did, son. I got you. Lord, I messed up. I know you did, daughter. I got you. Lord, I messed up. Listen, you got to confess it all to God. So now you know who your daddy really is, my God. But then you own up to it to him so he can know your heart is real, right? Amen, amen. I don't want to know your business. Amen. And I know sometimes you can't even tell people your business because they tell your business. That's right. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. So what the Lord want to do, he want to make sure that we're on a soul train. He wants to uh, break us from soul ties. My God, he wants us to be victorious. He wants us to be bubbling up in him. Glory to God. Overflow. What the church needs now is everybody on one accord so they all can overflow. What we're here for is to get the needs of the community, the widows, the single mothers. Everything. So once we all come together, listen, once we get out of the old time slave broke mentality, we can really change communities. Come on. Glory to God. But then they're going to say that's prosperity. Amen. No, 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 no. We're trying to get these situations fixed up. Let's just don't do a school back to school bash. Let's do something every year. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Hey, man, I tell Lady Ruth this all the time. 
It's a thing called the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils. You have a bill that's a thousand dollars, and you have uh, something that gets you to the next level that's a thousand dollars. But you can't really get there because you got this bill that's a thousand dollars. So now you got to pay the bill and wait more time till you gain a thousand dollars, right? So I'm telling Lady Ruth, I said, my God, if I would have paid that bill, we'd have been right back into what we was in before we came out of what we was in. But we stayed faithful to what God brought us out of. All this stuff that we're saying, glory to God, is God is not going to let that weapon take you out of here. No level. Come on. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He want to break you from soul ties. He want to take you to a whole nother level. My God, because we all have purpose. We all have purpose. I said, I don't want to push you in ministry. Glory to God. I want to push you to purpose that's going to help push the ministry. Amen. We don't need a million evangelists. Glory to God. Even though that's good, let's push the evangelists. Let's push the pastor. Let's push the church so we can be what God has called us to be. Without hating on our brother and sister. Right? I want people to bubble up. Even though they got their mouth on me, I still want you to be blessed. Glory to God. I still want you to be blessed. Glory to God. I was telling Lady Room, you know, they say, what type of pastor is that? Yeah, I'm that dude. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm that dude that started a church in a 200 square foot barbershop. I'm that dude that would come down here and spend all this money for one soul. I'm that dude who's still bubbling up while you still talking, right? But what this is, is showing how God can manifest something in somebody who sold out, who's trying to tell you how to get sold out. S O U L, out. He wants your soul to get out of what you want. As you get on the soul train, it's not going to always be a smooth ride. It's not going to always be a smooth ride. It's going to be some bumps and bruises, amen. But if you don't have nobody on the intercom telling you to buckle up, if you don't got nobody on the intercom to tell you to just calm down, amen, and trust in the Lord, my God, and depend on God, amen, and pray your way out, and he has a cattle on a thousand hills, amen, then you, you won't be so crazy. A lot of us going crazy because we haven't heard the word. Amen, it says, let this mind be in Christ. A lot of our mind is in whatever else is out there in the world. Amen, because we really don't know what's going on. Amen, I know that we do need counselors. I know that we do need people who can really uh, speak some scientific uh, things about your mind with the electrons and the neurons. I know that's real because some of us have chemical imbalances in our life anyway. God, I'm full of faith, but I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> amen, amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm smart, but then again, I can get a little ignorant. Amen. I know what's going on, glory to God. But at any given time, if I ain't holding on to the spirit, you might see some flesh. But you know what keeps me in order? The altar. We got to put our flesh in subjection so our spirit can do what God has called us to do. So now our kids can grow up in the way they should grow up. And then we good. Amen. Soul train. Soul train. Soul ties. Breaking the soul ties. Breaking the soul ties. Casting these imaginations down. My God. Being who God has called us to be. Amen. We should be a great, fruitful, beautiful church displaying Christ. When people look at your life, they say, man, that's a good God. Amen. When they look at your life, they say, man, God is good. When they look at your life, they say, man, God really did that for them. God, I want some of that God. Oh, taste and see. The Lord wants people to look at your life and say, let me get a sample of that. <laughs> let me try that. You know how when you go to Sam's and you're already hungry and they got samples and you go about three times. Hey, man, that's me. Yeah, can I testify? Hey, man, what you got? Some donuts? I'm going to be right back from the head to the other side. See, you want to think it's me. Hey, I want a sample of that because it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How the Lord is good and I ain't never tasted it. How the Lord is good and he ain't never gave me a breakthrough. How the Lord is good, Lord, show me the way. You gotta be hungry. What must I do to be saved? What must I do for my whole household to be saved? Right? God wanna get your whole household saved 
So once your whole household saves, they know who to trust in. It's Joshua saying, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I get on my grandkids. You don't think you're coming over here for the weekend ain't going to church. Amen. Come on, we about to roll. We about to roll because everything you see, Poppy got. My daddy God gave it to me. Every place you see in her, the Lord did it. So once they understand, now they can start talking. My son, my grandson, we was at the park yesterday. He said, how long the ministry has been started? That blew my mind. It is. For him to say ministry. It blew my mind because I'm thinking like, where has he heard this word ministry? I'm looking at this young man and he said ministry. He 10 years old. We never had those conversations. I teach him about life and family and money. Glory to God. But when he said ministry, it made me look at him different. It made me look. Let, let, now I'm about to flow into a whole different realm right here. It made me look at him different. Because now some of my DNA is raising up in his body. Money talk. He said, how long has the ministry been started? So I went to the future already. I don't know about y'all. I thought about a future young preacher. My God. I thought about a future young me. I thought about a future young youth pastor. When he said in his mind, we out there is Pat. We have force in part. They having a band. He said, out of all his pain, he just pulled up. How long has the ministry been started? Morning talk. Come on. That blew me away. I looked at him like, what did you say? <laughs> His little bitty spirit is inclining of the Lord. Hey Amen. Listen, I'll say this too. I don't care how many songs them kids know. I don't care how many things they see in their life. One thing that would never lose or leave them would be the word of God. That's right. I'm a testimony. From 10 to 12, I did this. When I went astray, I came back to this. Because I knew that my weapons of woo, God, I had to learn in the spirit. So as I learned in the spirit, I spoke in the spirit. And then the spirit became manifestation in the natural. I'm walking heavy, but it's okay. You got to speak it before you see it. So when you see it, you know what you spoke. Speak and talk. Come on. You got to speak it before you see it. So when you see it, you know what you spoke. That's good. Catch that. Speak it, see it, you know what you spoke. So now when people are looking at you like, how did that come? I spoke it. And now you're walking in authority that my God gave me the ability to speak. He gave Adam dominion over the garden and told him to name everything in there. So listen, once we come back and to know who we are, now we have authority in our mouth. And people are trying to figure out how you made it out with no money. Come on, got this. Because you're speaking your way out of your situation. When we had $16, the Lord said, the abundance of rain is here. So I kept speaking it until I start seeing some green. Listen, when you're in a drought, when you're in a desert, you're thinking and thanking God for an oasis of water or something. And you start seeing mirages. You start hallucinating that's right, dude. You know, back in the day, them old cartoons when they was in the garden and in the, the, uh, the desert and they bugs buddy them. And they look up, they thirsty, their mouth is dry. And they see a Coca Cola just waving. And they get there, and this is an old cactus. <laughs> Y'all remember them cartoons? Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. All of that. Pop out. So those are little hidden messages letting you know that as you're in your journey, sometimes things will try to cloud your vision. Everything that look good ain't good, right? You look over something tall, dark, and handsome. You finally get them, and you come out with three black eyes. Three, yeah, three. I don't know how you got three, but you was looking for something, and you got what you're looking for. Or you was looking for some uh, Coke bottle shape. And you got her, she don't cook or clean or nothing. My God. <laughs> Amen. You see a mirage. Uh, Sometimes God will give you what you ain't looking for. Right. Ooh, listen. Oh, hallelujah. Can I flow real quick? Don't look for nothing else. Look for God first. 
So when you look for God, then you'll see something in the hallway like, hey girl. <laughs> Amen. And when you find your good thing, you obtain favor. So when you find that one that you're looking for, now you get favor. And now it's easier for you to do stuff where people say you couldn't do it. Even on paper, saying you can't do it because you got three felonies, sawed off shotgun, mob action, 10 pounds of weed. You can't do that, but God says, I can. Because now you get favor. And they say favor ain't fair. And I come to let you know favor ain't fair. Amen. Some things that God does in your life ain't fair. But because you sold out to the soul train, now you can do what God has called you to do. Amen. Is this blessing you today? My God, my God. So no weapon formed against you should prosper. I prophesy things should turn around in your life. Stuff that's trying to hold you down, it should turn around, my God. Because God want to get you to where you need to be, right? I want you to be where you need to be. Because when you get there, my God, I can tell you what's next. I can tell you what's next. I can tell you how to get some of the things I got if you pay attention. Amen. I can tell you, my God, you know what I did? This is a little sneak peek. I sold out to God, and I sold out to God. Listen to this. S-O-U-L and S-O-W-E-D. I sold out to God, and I sold out to God. I didn't let my financial, glory to God, construct dictate how much I was going to sow to God. I'm telling you this. I always say each year should be double of the next year. I said, how was God going to top my 2017? Now, this is good. This will be some teaching that you may not get nowhere else, right? Ask God, how was he going to top last year? We're not testing him. we asking him. We're not testing God. we asking God, how are you going to top my God my last year? So now... When you start seeing how he going to do it, now I'm asking him already, how you going to top 18, God? Amen. How you going to top 18? Because now I'm expecting, woo, so top. I'm expecting God to do more than he did last year. I prophesied double. Woo. Woo. Give me two more minutes. I prophesied double over you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy double over you in the name of Jesus. My God, double. So when you get double, it's going to be double. It's going to be double. So I prophesy double over your life. And you trying to figure out how you're going to make it out. God says double. He says double. You know how we say double for your trouble. My God, you didn't go through all what you went through for nothing. He didn't bring you out of that for nothing. That's true. Oh, I feel that, my God. He didn't bring you out of all of that for nothing. She under my sota masa. People are asking, what must I do to be saved? They need to see some manifestation of what's going on. And it's not about material. It's about how did you make it out of that situation without no help. I prophesied double over your life today. I prophesy that the soul tower ties are broken if you want them broken. If you want them broken, receive. Raise your hands up. If you want them broken, receive. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that every soul tie, everything that tried to exalt itself high above God should be cast down in the name of Jesus. I declare, declare and decree that it be, should be severed. Glory to God from the head right now. We cut it off right now. I thank you, Lord God, right now for deliverance. Yes, I thank you right now for deliverance. I thank you right now, God, for back pain right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for back pay right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. We declare and decree that it is so. In Jesus' name, clap your hands.